the important thing about the math is that there's this thing called invariant. Invariant is just a constant. A constant that doesn't change. Like, duh, it's called constant. And the thing, the thing about this beautiful math of AMMs, which is a little bit different from the other token bonding curves, is that it, it has this effect of, it has this very interesting effect of something being constant. What do I mean? So this invariant concept came from the idea of energy conservation law. So first principles in energy conservation, which is uh, physics principles, we should always go back to first principles, is that energy cannot be destroyed or cannot be created. It just transforms from one energy to the other. So right now I have um, potential energy, like gravitational potential energy. And if I, if I hold a ball, there's gravitational potential energy. And if I drop it, then the gravitational potential energy goes down, but the kinetic energy and, and the heat energy from friction goes up because it's moving. So energy transforms, but the total amount of energy is still the same. So that's what, that's what constant means. The, the constant that we're talking about here, the invariant that we're talking about here, is that the total remains the same because that's a constant. The ball at this angle or the ball at this height and the ball that is on the ground or the ball that's falling and moving towards the ground, the total energy, will, the total sum of energy in each state is the same, but the, the distribution of energy, the amount of energy, which, which proportion of energy goes to which kind of energy, it's different. So that's what we mean by a constant, an invariant. This principle, this first principle is now being applied to token bonding curves it's in this aspect of automated market makers. And this is a function that is very important that we're going to talk about in all the different case studies that we're going to see later. Why do we want an invariant? Well, firstly, because we said that humans are not involved anymore or humans have very little involvement. Robots will be doing the job. Robots will be executing. So you want some form of rules that robots can follow. And the robots are, are super smart at aggregating information that comes in. But you want them to follow some form of rules. And the form of rules is that there needs to be a constant that the robot has to follow. So when the robot is getting information, trade pricing, order, order pricing, oracle pricing, they know that they have to follow this invariant, this constant rule, this constant variable that they have to follow. And that's how they can execute them well. Of course, there is nothing in the world without trade-offs. In economics, there's no such thing as free lunch. There's always an opportunity cost to it. So what is the opportunity cost that we're talking about here? We're talking about the trade-off between price perfection versus predictability. With this mechanism, we don't really have price perfection because later we're going to, you're going to see that there will be stuff like price slippage and a lot of other things that it's not a very efficient market, but that's where perfection comes in. But we have predictability because we can predict the sh knowing the shape of the curve, knowing the math that's involved, we can predict that this is the expected value that we can receive or this is the expected state the, the ecosystem or the AMM will be. So that's a, that's a little trade-off that we have to accept. What makes an AMM a good AMM or the best AMM? First, you need to have increased liquidity and second, you need to reduce slippage fee. Together, they will make the, the trade a lot more efficient. So increased liquidity is what I mentioned in network effects just now, where you need to have enough liquidity, enough tokens, so that people can trade in large volumes. And by having that a lot, a large volume, then you will reduce slippage fees because because of the, how the math is calculated. The math is calculated based on the total amount of liquidity there is in the pool, which is your denominator. So the bigger the denominator, the less impact that your trade will, will create. So you want big liquidity, you want strong liquidity. So your, your fraction, the base will be very, very strong. So if you think about a pyramid, the base is very large compared to the top, so it doesn't topple easily, as opposed to, as opposed to the opposite of a pyramid where the bottom is very thin and the top is very broad, then it topples very easily. It's the same concept where when you have increased liquidity, then you're increasing the size of your denominator, so your, your pyramid is a lot more stable. And... If you have a small liquidity and you have a big trade trying to come in, then it's the opposite of a curve, opposite of a pyramid, and your, your denominator is so small, your, your numerator is so big, then it just topples over and then it just messes up your system. 